Hi, my name is Eric Klein. I'm excited to present to you this exciting new feature for K-Cycles Ultra Lighting. It is the most complete and powerful lighting system for cycles. Lighting is probably the most critical part to bring your art to the next level. We have great features like light groups, like mixing, like linking, tone mapping per light group, in an interactive viewport and final lighting workflow. Some of the amazing and amount of options available at your fingertips. Solo preview, like reminder light group mode, real time line mixing from the viewport of final writing, light linking in real time with many options. Here we have a basic interior scene. You know, you write just you'll see all uh, the K-Cycle options and you'll find ultra lighting. So you check on ultra lighting and you'll see divided into three main sections, light groups, light linking and tone mapping. So light groups allow you to organize all your lighting of your scene into different passes. Below you, you have a list. The way you start with a light group, we start first manual way of adding a light group. Add a new blank light group. Click on the plus sign and that creates the default name, light exterior. Put all the exterior lights on this light group. So we have our light exterior light group. Right now it has no lights. You can find the lights that you want to add. Let's say we want to add the, the lights from this collection area and area one. Basically we'll select on the light, you go to the properties, below shading, you'll find a light group option. And there you can select the light group that we just created. Now we can go back, that area light got added, some of the other values that it has. And you can go do this to all types of light, also mesh type of lights, circle light, you can go to the properties, a group option there, or you can also go to the world, under the background you'll find a way to select your lights your background light. That's the manual way of, of knowing where the lights are connected to a light group. And by the same token, you can go back to your area light one, properties, Xbox, and then you'll go back and you'll see the light is already gone from the light exterior light group. The easier way to add lights would be to use inside the light group, I mean the light list, you'll have a way to add lights directly and automatically into them. Click on the area light, hit the plus, it's added, minus will remove it. You can also multi-select, then you want to add both of them, even a third one here, click plus and you add all three, or even easier will be just click on the collection name, click plus, and it'll add all the lights belonging to that collection. And I could add a second new blank light group. We can double click on it, and rename it, create a new call light emission. You can same thing, click on the collection name and those lights get added. As you select each light group, the lights belonging to that light group show below. You can also change the values, light exterior light group. You can just select that and let's change it to 500. Check to see if those values got changed. To the properties, see they got changed. Another quick way to get to some of the options of those lights, if you're in a different location, would be just to click on the select button, select that area light, and you can see right where it gets highlighted and highlighted on the viewport also. An even faster way to add a light group is to use the toolbar options. What it does is it adds the light group plus the lights belonging to that light group using the, the light bulb icon. If I want to add this light group with the lights, I select the collection name, click, and I add it, the collection light group with those two lights. We can delete that. We can add an individual light with a light group. Create light group area with a light area. Just same, create an area. And you double click and rename it light area. So do the multi-selection. Creates a light group, selected main area, and that's those three lights. So add a world light group, and we have the world light group automatically options for world, and then you check, and at that, as, as you can see, the name light world got added automatically. You created a new light group world with a background world attached to it. Starting from scratch, have ultra lighting automatically picked all your light groups with the lights attached to it based on the collection that the light belongs to at collection light groups. Click on it and automatically it founds the collections that have lights plus the world light group. It found all the right lights. If you want to start over, be careful because this is cannot be undone. Remove them all. You can change the order. You can move world to the to the top of my list, move it up. And you can move things down so you can organize it just you feel more useful so now let's start from scratch again get all the collections all the lights go into preview mode it all went through all the 
lights in all your collections in the middle list this is the lighting that comes out, out of the light groups each individual light group gets added together and if you have all the lights added into your light groups then i'm clicking exactly the same through the light groups or without light groups start looking at some of the options in the toolbar solo mode is probably one of the most useful ones you can use the mouse to select each contribution of this light group this is what the interior light is contributing the exterior the emission on the light bulbs the world and if you noticed everything is completely denoised if you want you can go back and change without denoising ease of use and flexibility and everything is very fast in real time with denoising in all the light groups the second quite useful feature the remainder remainder mode the r if you add this it creates a remainder light group see right now it is black because any contribution of light that is missing from the scene gets added into the remainder light group but in this case all the light groups that we have are being used and we're using all the lights the remainder would be black let's remove the exterior and the light emission group we will now select the light group remainder now we have the contribution both of the light exterior and the light emission on this light group layer things that are quite useful for one of them is if you don't want to use a lot of light groups you can just use the one that you want to work on and have all the rest of the lights automatically be attached to the light group remainder another useful option is lights that belong to generally linked lights that are not in the scene directly will not show up automatically light group remainder option allows you to bring all those external lights into this light group automatically start again and let's talk about light linking light linking is one of the powerful features the lighting artist gives a lot of control in where the light goes and what light affects which objects in the scene you can control per light group where the light gets distributed to which objects used directly or have them inverted in the lighting i'm working with the light exterior and i don't like the light on this group affecting the wall i just want to affect it only the table for product designers or visualization or for art archivists there's a lot of times where you need light in certain areas but don't want it to affect other areas that is going to detract in the quality of your lighting i would just say and select what object i want that light group to affect in this case i want the table collection same as the other options plus just click on it instantly you'll have this light only affecting the table and none of the other objects in that light group if i take away the solo mode see now that the lighting interior that was affecting the wall is not affecting it anymore stronger light on that, that part of the table only compare that with the initial scene the original scene and now with ultra lighting and the light linking only affecting the table it removed it all the lights to that wall and only affected to that table you can see this a tremendous amount to control that you can do with light linking another feature that you can have let's say i also want to affect it not only the table but i want the light exterior also to affect the ground click on it select it click on the add now the light got right on the floor on the table and now we can solo mode the floor get added plus the table the plus adds per collection name or multiple selections or selection the same thing with the minus i can just remove it or add it back again see everything is in real time and dynamic now the option that we have with light linking is probably to invert this light group to affect everything except for the table and the ground we have inverting icon click on it the light every every place except these two items if you go back to the complete mode this area is darker and the table is darker compared to the original scene by and clicking ultra light see how that contribution so one of the great benefits about this ultra lighting is everything is real time there's no re-rendering can we can really uh, play around with all your different lighting scenarios very fast besides that you have full control of tone mapping per light group we have full selection the power is affecting the energy value and the color tint affects the color value let's do some quick 
modes, we can go into solo mode, take away the inversion away. With tone mapping, everything is dynamic in real time, so there's no re-rendering. But if in cases you wanted to adjust the energy level directly on that property, you can also do that. Here's the intensity, let's say instead of 5, you put 50. Since it's basically affecting the directly a property, not to the light layers, then that does require re-render. Go back. The other option is, obviously, you can have the tone mapping all in real time. And as you can see, it's basically, it does the same, same values of, on the energy effect. Obviously, we can have many other adjustments. Some of the contrast settings, as you can bring out more light. Play around with that and within solo mode and not solo mode to kind of see how the contribution looks all together. Some saturation, bring out more color. A little bit cooler right now, it looks maybe too warm. Make it cooler and then that changes the temperature. You have full control per light group. You can go to my exterior lights. Right now, they're too strong because I want to have more focus on my table, reducing the power. It only affects the light exterior group. So the mode, that's the lighting we get for that group. Now you can really control your lighting, change the colors. This is the intensity for this layer. Switch instantly, different modes. You want to have it low saturation. Everything is real time, full tone mapping levels of balance, saturations per light group. So once you're happy with the lighting and you balance the different light groups to something that artistically you feel is accomplished, then you can hit final render and you should get exactly the same result from what we had on the viewport. And there you have it. We can see that we have identical look done in, in the final render. In addition, ultra lighting fully integrated with post effects. Now select post effects. Let's start to do some nice bloom effect for the light bulbs that we see. Click bloom, start increasing the power, something like 10. We have a nice bloom, but we have a problem with the wall getting the bloom effect also. Control the bloom effect only light assemblies. All you have to do is select light assembly and add it into our mask. And instantly now, it only affecting the light assembly bloom. We wanted to add some dense distortion and a little bit of lateral chromatic aberration. Increase it. We can also put in vignette. Real-time viewport fully integrated with all the post effects in the scene. Let's look another real-life example of a more complex scene or common classroom demo scene from Blender Foundation and how would you use ultra lighting workflow to quickly adjust the lighting for this scene. Start with ultra lighting. To go quickly, we'll just add all the lights per collection. Turn on render preview. Turn a little bit more so I can see all of them at once. I like to always go into solo mode just to see more or less what lights are in which collections and, and what is the contribution of that light group into the scene. So here we can see the windows of collection 11, so that's some area lights. You can also use the arrow key if you have the cursor on top of the list, it'll, it'll, you can up and down the list here. You probably have, obviously collection 12 has the sun. Here you have the corridor side, ceiling light, the blackboard, some exterior field lights, and the world contribution. Turn off the solo mode, you'll notice that the ceiling lights are dark. They were not captured from the automatic collection edition. And the reason for that, they're externally linked from a separate file lights. The ones will not get automatically added. A number of options to get this resolved. The fast, easy one is obviously just can add a remainder group. The remainder would grab whatever's not a contribution of the light into this light group. See right away, the remainder group has the light contribution of those ceiling lights. Let's go in solo mode. That's the contribution. So I automatically grab that and easy to use and beneficial. Now, if I out of solo mode and compare my lighting with or without light groups is identical. So we've captured all the lights into our light group setup. And if you don't want to use light group remainder off, then obviously we lost that contribution. If you want to add it into the scene, just select those scene lights. So here are the ceiling, externally linked ceiling lamps. Select all of them, make them, make them a, a real instance. So they become part of the scene. And there you go. Two things you can do, you can just click on that collection, add it. Every time you add a new light group, it does do a re-render. So but once you get that done, you can go in solo mode. You can see all the lights 
the belonging to that light group. If we take away the solo mode and we enable and disable, now we know that we have captured all the lighting in our light group. You can quickly play around with some of the options. You want to change the sun. You can quickly do a tone mapping. Let's say we want to bring the sun really strong and change the whole mood of the scene. And then we do some of the contribution of the outside lights. Maybe lower this contribution to I'll get out of solo mode and then move a sunlit lighting setup. We can compare with the original. Quickly, in a few seconds, almost in real time, you can set up your lighting scenarios. And let's say for artistic reasons, sunlight to affect only the desk, but not the floor. Select the light group for the sun, select the floor, add it, and then we want it to affect the sun to affect everything except for the floor, so we invert that selection. You can actually see how it completely changes some of the mood and the intensity of what you want more importance as far as the desk is concerned in this case. My last example, I'll show you the barbershop interior scene. You can go into preview mode, select ultra lighting, get all the lights that are available. And once it's finished rendering, unselect light groups, all the contribution of the lights into the light groups. Let's expand this a little bit more. Go into solo mode, which is a quick way to preview. You can just quickly, with a keyboard, just can go down to what the contribution of the light was available in each, in each collection group. So we want to have more of a dreamy looking sunset for this scene. Start adjusting some of those. I start by selecting the ones that have the main light contribution, add the tone, tone mapping, and let's try to change the balance into something warmer, change some of that intensity with some contrast. You just continue on. You want to add maybe more light bulb. It's a little bit dark inside. And I continue adjusting some of the other layers with things to a warmer color. Continue on, you'll, you'll see some different areas where you may want to have less light. For example, select this picture, which seems to have very reflective lighting. We can I'll select it and then add it as a light link. It's too bright. Don't want any lighting into that while I can invert it. So now that bright spot that was distracting on, on that lighting is gone. I want to bring up more light into this back area, more into this chair, but not no, no place else. So I quickly add a point light. I quickly switch into U e shading mode and position the light. And then I go back to preview render mode. Got my light there. We can see how much more that contributes to that. This hasn't been added into my light groups. Since that's already selected, all I need to do is click on this automatic light group. To my point light that I just added, got added into a new light group layer. You can see the contribution of that point light. can increase my intensity. I want it on the chair only. Do a light link for that chair. And there's more than one item, so keep adding those items. My chair got added. Keep increasing that intensity, add some more saturation with color. If I move out of solo mode, you can see right away contribution to that. We're going to keep adjusting it interactively. Color tint, a lot more light in this section. So I continue the adjustment. We can also try to compare with the original to see how it looks. We have a very dreamy light looking warm feeling for this scene now. Just quickly for the final render to make sure that it looks exactly the same as the viewport view. And this is our final render. We can compare this to what we have in the viewport. It looks exactly the same. Well, I hope you enjoy this exciting new feature for K-Cycles, ultra lighting. And thank you very much for listening. See you next time.